Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we get to take a look at the 2025 Audi Q7. Huge shout out to Audi Northlake for providing this three row SUV for me today. Definitely take a look at their website. That link is down in the description. This Q7 is finished off in Watamo Blue Metallic. MSRP is just over $70,000. And this Q7 is powered by the two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder. That's paired to the eight speed automatic transmission. And it pumps out 261 horsepower, 273 pound feet of torque, sent through that Quattro all wheel drive system, propelling this 4,900 pound SUV from zero to 60 in 5.7 seconds. It has a top speed of 130 miles an hour. It also has a fuel capacity of 22 and a half gallons. You'll expect to see around 19 miles per gallon in the city, 25 out on the highway. This has a wheelbase of 117.9 inches. Its overall length is 199.3. It has a width of 77.6 and a height of 68 and a half inches. As we move on to the exterior styling now for the 2025 Q7, this is a refresh for the Q7. So there's no major updates. We just have a few minor differences from the last model year. One of those differences is the inlets on both sides just have a little bit different shape to them. Very nice with the brushed aluminum and gloss black along with some of the parking sensors. But the large hexagonal grill is still the same shape. However, the Audi badge has been redesigned. So this is a really nice new design. There's a forward facing camera, sensors on both sides for the adaptive cruise, and then some chrome for the uh, trim accents within the middle there, brush trim for the entire surround. Headlights are a little bit different in their design. There's actually two strips for the turn signal and the DRL, so those are separated. Everything is LED, of course, and then there's some more brushed accents in the lower section with some more cutouts down below and then lines that come down the hood. So very subtle in those differences, but a very nice look. Now, as we work our way to the side, not many differences here. We have a very nice set of 17 inch wheels for this model that matches the brushed aluminum very nicely. This has the power folding side mirrors with a camera and a turn signal. Full moonroof up top along with the roof racks. All of the window trim is chrome and it has a great design to it. There's no differences with the overall shape, but very nice lines that run down the side. We have some bulges for the front and rear fender arches just to give it a little bit more depth perception. And then in back, this has a body colored spoiler with the third brake light. Wiper blade is in the lower section. There's the new Audi logo. A Little bit different design for these LED taillights. More brushed aluminum running right through the middle of that power lift gate. There's all of the sensors as well, backup camera. This can even tow right around 4,400 pounds. And the biggest difference for the Q7 is now that it has real exhaust tips. And it makes the rear end look that much nicer. Now, as we work our way to the interior, you can use the button on the key fob or the one up underneath to open up the power lift gate where this is a three row SUV. So currently we do have some items in the back, but the third row is automatic. So you have those controls down on the side where you can easily lower these seats and raise them back up. The second row is all manual. So there are three individual seats that you do have to maneuver, but even with them up, it's not all that bad. We have some bulky items in here at the moment, which makes it look a little small, but you can definitely fit in a lot of items. And there's a little bit of storage underneath the floor, mainly access to some of those components. But you have a good amount of space and sizing for this. We'll check out how I fit once we work our way into the back there. But you can close the power lift gate. You can lock it too. You can even lock and unlock this from the back door handles. So I just locked it. And if I go back up to it and grab the door handle, that will unlock it. Now this has the manual adjusting sunshades that you can use. We have some wood trim, window adjustment, Bang & Olufsen sound system, and a little bit of storage. And then take a look at this beautiful interior. Now in order to work our way into the third row, this is the manual adjustment that you need to use in order to lock the seat down. So that's how you can fold it. From there, you can grab on this lever here and actually lift the entire bottom rest up. So at five foot 10, I can work my way into this third row. Now I have strategically set these seats in different orientations because they do move forwards, allowing you to have more leg room versus on this side here. So you'd probably want a little bit more leg room like that. But at five foot 10, I'm just up against the headliner. Honestly, it's not bad for two people. Only two people can fit back here. You have your armrest, cup holder, and a little bit of storage. So it's not bad. As long as you have that seat moved forwards, 
all the way back is just not going to do it. I guess you could put your feet maybe underneath the seat there, but a little bit tight there. But either way, they are functional. I could ride around and then easily hop out. And then you can put that down and then you can just pull on that lever and with one hand, you are ready to go. Now, as far as second row seating goes, I have plenty of space. So plenty of room for my feet and my legs there. We have some storage pockets, climate vents, you even get a heated second row too with all of your climates for your dual zone temperature where you'd like the air to go. There's auxiliaries located just underneath that. And then I have plenty of space with the seat all the way reclined. So as you can tell, we have a few different versions here, but all three are manual. So you do have to pull this strap right in the middle in order to fold down and adjust the middle seat. But it does recline just like this. So very nice for the second row. Now, right in the middle, you can push on this button here and then fold that armrest down where you do get two cup holders if you need to use those. And plenty of visibility, lots of glass, especially with the sunroof open. It's very nice for the second and third row, surprising for its size. Now up front, the door panel is just like the rear. There's memory seating adjustments, all of the window controls, power folding side mirrors are also heated too. And then same amount of space down below and then a beautiful set of front seats, which are power operated. So all of those controls are on the side, of course. Now, as we move on to the steering wheel, solid black leather. Let's start this up though. And we can go over the virtual cockpit where on this left side, there's all the controls in order to do that. On the right side, there's Bluetooth and voice commands, volume and tuning. And then you even have a favorites button. So you can push on this and that will pop up with anything that you use the most, you can configure there. This also has a set of steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. But coming back to this gauge cluster, engine temperature is on the left, fuel is on the right side, and then you can scroll through your adaptive cruise, you have your audio, you can look at your phone, even pull up the navigation. And then you have a few settings here that you can scroll through just to monitor all of that. Now, if you'd like to see something like the nav in full screen, just click on view and you can bring that up and you can still go through all this info in a little bit larger of a view. So it just depends on what you need to see for the day, your tack and miles per hour will minimize or become larger if you'd like to see them a little better. Now there's a little bit of storage on the left side of the steering wheel there. You have your headlight adjustments with some gloss black there. And then as we work our way back to the infotainment system, this is not new from Audi. So we have the split screen there, and then you also have a lot of icons that you can go through, just depending on what you need to see. There's also the fixed shortcuts on this left side, so you can get through all of that info, but very easy to use. Everything is laid out incredibly well. In between both of these screens, there's the engine start stop, downhill assist. You do have shortcuts for your nav, so you can quickly put those in. Garage door buttons, and then you can also shut that upper screen off if you would like to. Now the lower screen is basically all of your climates. So you have fan speed, temperature, heated and ventilated seats. You can even get into the heated steering wheel as well as the rear adjustments too. And then there's a few other controls down below, everything laid out well. There's also a shortcut to the drive select. So you can get into those different modes. There's traction control hazard, some defrosters as well. And we have a shortcut to the 360 camera system. So you can pull up all of these angles, just depending on the visibility that you need. And then there's also another control for your driver assistance. So you can set that up the way that you would like to. Power and volume is over on that right side. Now there's two cup holders, a little bit of storage and a 12 volt. This is how you put the vehicle into reverse where that backup camera will appear. And then you have drive and you can also shift using the shifter or the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. And then park is just behind that. Now there's the e-brake. You can also adjust the center armrest. And then when you open that up, you have wireless charging, some auxiliaries, and a little bit of storage. And then plenty of storage located in the glove box there. Up top, there's the touch sensitive dome lights, as well as the controls for the sunroof and the sunshade. And here's a look at visibility. It's a long vehicle. You have a little bit of a pillar there, but large windows on both sides. So you can even see over that left side. As we set off now behind the wheel for this 2025, Audi Q7. For the interiors, I've already seen not too many changes, but we have some subtle exterior changes, which is really cool to see for this. Hopefully, I would assume for the 2026 year model, we will see a complete upgrade possibly for the Q7. But it's been quite some time since I've been behind the wheel. I just got out of an SQ8 where it's very similar for everything as far as the technology layout. We just have a much smaller engine for this, 
Obviously, you can go up with an SQ7 if you would like to, or you can even go RSQ8 if you want even more power, which is not a third row, but you have a lot of options depending on the power that you want. So it's what you'd expect for a Turbo 4, especially with the weight of this SUV, but it handles well too. So it's nice that this isn't the performance version. You're not buying this to do zero to 60 runs. You're buying this for the third row to be a little bit more practical in size. However, it handles very, very nicely. So while it doesn't have the power for its weight, it has the handling characteristics to go around some turns like we are doing today. But it drives so nice. It's not all that large either. So maneuvering it around the parking lot like I have been today, it's not all that bad. It's obviously longer than the Q8 that I was recently in, but it's not a big three row SUV. So if you want that extra space, but you're not looking at Cadillac Escalade size, something like that, Yukon XL, those are massive three row vehicles. You can get something a little bit smaller that is still going to be just as practical. And it's so quiet driving this on the road. I think we have acoustic glass for the front windows, which does make it a little bit more quiet, a little bit more comfortable feeling. This is something that you can drive every single day. It's so relaxing to be behind the wheel. And while we are in dynamic mode, we'll go into second gear. Here we go. I will say it's not bad in its acceleration. It feels like it has an adequate amount of power for its size and the paddle shifters are pretty responsive. So we have that Tiptronic automatic. So if you need to use the paddle shifters, they are there. Not a loud vehicle either, of course, being the four cylinder here, but plenty of power and it handles well around these turns. So I am impressed with its handling, which I think is a major characteristic of any vehicle, let alone a three row SUV like this, just so that way you can take turns at a normal rate of speed. There's, does, there's no body roll or anything like that. It's gonna feel super comfortable and composed going around some of these turns. But this is what it's like to be behind the wheel for the 2025 Audi Q7. Definitely a luxury focused vehicle and one that has several options depending on what you would like. We have some wood trim for this, a piano black. There's different options that you can get if you just want a different type of material and some other options to really give you a good price range for this model. And something that you can definitely drive every single day, you can throw in a lot of people, you can put a small trailer on the back too, which makes it that much more capable depending on what you have with you. But that is going to wrap it up for the 2025 Audi Q7. Once again, huge shout out to Audi Northlake for providing this refresh Q7 for me today. Take a look at their website, give this video a huge thumbs up as well if you enjoyed it and consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. And I will see you all in the next video.